final unit we will look at this year focuses on acids and bases. So let's talk about some properties of both. Acids will have a sour taste. Now fortunately we're not doing any actual labs this year or else you might be tempted to taste acids and we know not to taste anything in the lab. But you've experienced acids in real life. Things like vinegar or citric acid like lemons. Those have a distinct sour taste because they are acidic. The acids that we deal with in this class are all going to be aqueous. It means they're all going to be dissolved in water. They're going to make solutions in water. These aqueous solutions are electrolytic. Now we talked about this as a property of ionic compounds. When they dissolve in water, their ions in solution conduct electricity. For acids, the ion that we're focusing on is the hydrogen ion. So acids all contain the hydrogen ion. And you might remember this, when we learned to name acids, we focused on the hydrogen ion. And we recognized acids as all starting with H and all being aqueous. So this is some stuff we've talked about before. Acids tend to be rather corrosive. That will depend on several factors, of course. Some acids are stronger than others, and also a very concentrated acid would have a different effect than a very dilute acid. Acids just feel like an aqueous solution if they get on your skin. They just have a watery feeling to them. Of course, if it's a corrosive acid, you might start getting a chemical burn eventually, but initially they just feel kind of watery. And acids have a low pH. Now, hopefully this is something that you picked up in the activity that you did about acids and bases. Bases, however, have a very bitter taste. Now, sour and bitter are two very different things. They both have negative connotations in our language. Sour tends to be a flavor that we actually kind of seek. By putting things like vinegar or citrus in our food, we actually tend to enjoy those tastes. Bitter, however, is not a flavor we generally look after. Things like soap or rotten milk, for example, will all have bitter taste. So anytime you've gotten shampoo in your mouth, you've had the pleasure of tasting a base. The bases we look at in this class will also be aqueous, and they'll also be electrolytic. They conduct electricity. The ions that are in solution for bases are a little bit different. We recognize bases for having the hydroxide ion in solution. So as acids have the H plus ion, the bases will have OH minus ions. Bases can also be quite corrosive. Again, this will depend on how strong the base is and how concentrated it is. Bases, though, feel slippery when they get on your skin. And this is because there is a process called saponification, where the base will combine with any oils on your skin and make small amounts of soap. So when you have base on your skin, it actually feels like you have little bits of soap on your skin. It has that slippery feeling of soap. And in fact, you do, because that base has made soap with the oils from your skin. Bases have a high pH, however, and that's one way to differentiate them from acids. So let's take a moment and talk about what we mean by a low or a high pH. The pH scale generally goes from 0 to 14. It is possible to get a pH as a negative number, and it's possible to get a pH greater than 14, but it's pretty rare. For the most part, we're going to talk about a pH scale going from 0 to 14. The middle of the scale is 7, so we call a pH of 7 as being neutral, neither acidic or basic. Pure distilled water has a pH of 7. So when we say acids have a low pH, specifically what we're saying is that acids have a pH less than 7. And when we say bases have a high pH, specifically we mean that bases have a pH greater than 7. And again, hopefully this is something that you saw in that acid-base activity that we've already done. Now these definitions of acids and bases come from a gentleman named Svante Arrhenius. Arrhenius is the person who specifically defined acids as something that contains the H plus ion, and bases as something that contain the OH minus ion. That is his definition of an acid and a base. So hydrochloric acid, HCl, would be an acid. Potassium hydroxide, KOH, would be a base. There are a couple of problems with Arrhenius' definitions, however. The hydrogen ion is actually unstable in solution. You will never actually find H plus ions in solution. The second you put a hydrogen ion near a water molecule, it will quickly attach to the water molecule and form H3O plus. This H3O plus ion is called the hydronium ion. So when Arrhenius said that acids contain the H plus ion, that's true, but if you were to actually look for H plus ions in solution, you would never find them. You would find these hydronium ions instead. And that's just kind of a semantic point. That's not a big deal. A bigger problem is this. This is ammonia, NH3. Ammonia is a base. It has a pH higher than 7. If you were to taste ammonia, and I really don't recommend you taste ammonia. We've had a big discussion lately about tasting cleaning products. It's a bad idea. If you were to taste ammonia, 
it would have a very bitter taste. It would definitely be a base. But it doesn't have OH on it. Arrhenius wouldn't call it a base, even though all the other tests would prove it to be a base. So that's an issue, and we'll get to that in a little bit. First, let's talk about some acid-base reactions and what Arrhenius would predict. So let's take sulfuric acid and combine it with potassium hydroxide. Sulfuric acid is the acid with the sulfate ion. Remember, IC comes from ATE. Sulfate is SO4 with a 2 minus charge. If it's an acid, it has H plus. So sulfuric acid must be H2SO4. Potassium hydroxide is KOH because potassium has a plus one charge and hydroxide has a minus one charge. So we're going to be mixing H2SO4 with the KOH. This is a classic setup for a double replacement reaction. You're going to have your dance partner switch. So the positive H over here is going to start dancing with the negative OH and the positive K right here is going to start dancing with the negative SO4 over here. So when we switch partners, our K with a one plus charge dances with SO4 with a two minus charge. And so you get K2SO4. And then when H plus and OH come together, we form water. We could balance it by putting a two in front of the KOH and a two in front of the H2O. And we've already described this earlier in the year as an acid-base reaction. Remember, we had two types of double replacement reactions. We had precipitation reactions that made solid, and we had our acid-base reactions that make water. So Arrhenius's definition of an acid base leads us to these double replacement reactions that we've talked about before. You will note here that we have this double arrow where the reaction can go forward or go backwards. Interestingly, this equation as written doesn't really go backwards, it only goes forward. We're going to see later in this unit where this double arrow becomes important, where we have to consider a reaction going forward and a reaction going backwards at the same time. There's a little preview of what to come. So if we take a look at this reaction, our spectator ions would be the ones that don't form the water. That's going to be the K plus and the SO4 2 minus. Those are the ions that started aqueous and stayed aqueous. They don't change. So our net ionic equation is going to show the combination of H plus and OH minus. And that makes water. That was our definition of an acid-base reaction from earlier in the year, a double replacement reaction that makes water. And that will be the net ionic equation for all of these acid-base reactions. Now you might be saying, Mr. Conley, you told me on a previous slide that the H plus ion doesn't exist, that it's really H3O plus. And that's correct. So if we wanted to be technically correct, we wouldn't write H plus. We would say two hydronium ions would combine with two hydroxide ions and make four waters. But the first reaction is totally fine. Most people just write it as H+, plus, even though we know it should be correctly written as H3O+. Plus. When dealing with Arrhenius, these acid-base reactions will always make water. And we said that before. But these acid-base reactions always make a salt. The salt is the ionic product that's not water, or it's the thing that contains the spectator ions. So in this case, potassium sulfate is the salt in the reaction. 